Needless to say, cheating and hacking is bad, so we'll do our experiments in a 20-year-old single-player game, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. The very first thing that people want to hack in any game when they start playing it is money, in-game currency. And we can also start with that. And we can't hack something that we don't understand, so let's ask ourselves, what is a computer game? Well, it turns out it's actually just a program, written in a programming language, similar to what you and I do every day. And if it's a program, then there's source code. In the source code, well, I assume if your game has a player, you would probably create the player class for it, right? And if you want your player to have money, you would probably create the money variable for it. And you could have some additional classes, like maybe classes for pedestrians that drop money when you run them over. What actually happens when you create these classes, though, when you create objects? We know that they get created and put somewhere in memory. It doesn't really matter where at this point, but somewhere in memory. This, in turn, means that the player class that has the money variable is also somewhere in memory. And we also know that we can read and write random access memory in any order. If we find out where the money variable is in memory, or what its address is, where it's located, in theory, we can change the value. Only question is where do we get the, the address? Well, we Google. You Google for GTA San Andreas memory addresses. It's as simple as that. The very first link looks very promising. It leads to GTA Mods Wiki. And if you zoom in on the very first value, it's actually the memory address for money. So bingo, problem solved. We actually now know the memory address. And in theory, again, we should be able to tell the computer, you write into this specific location, this specific value. And this way we'll be able to change the amount of money that we have. I know at this point you probably have a lot of questions like where did they get the memory address? Doesn't it change? Why is it, why is it static? What happens if I restart my game? Was that the JVM memory layout on your slides? What does it have to do with GTA or Kotlin native? Don't think about it too much. Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Let's just trust people on the internet that the address is right and it doesn't change. And we only have to understand the whole idea about memory and writing and reading memory on a very high level. The rest is just implementation detail. So yeah, let's get to work. We know, we know what to do. We now need to figure out how to do it.